Sit. Good. Go to your mat. Down. Good boy. This is a great exercise to do with Twombly. Just do it five minutes a day. Make sure that he's very calm. You see how he's waiting? No. Good. He waited. He kind of touched my hand with his nose and then I went like this. No. He backed off. I put the food there. He waited till I withdrew and he took it off the mat. It's a very important part of this exercise because with Twombly, he's very jumpy and nervous. And he, he leaps before he thinks. If he's, if he's uh, nervous about something or gets upset or startled, he's going to leap. That's why he's lunging. He was lunging at passersby on your street and lunging, having some leash aggression because he panics. It's a very short fuse. Well, he has a much longer one now, but this is how that I've, I'm developing his fuse. Every day, it gets a little bit longer. When he has to sit here, or lay down here, and be calm and wait like this, good. Each time we do something like that, we're giving him a longer fuse. He's getting calmer, uh, more, uh, more likely to be stay calm in a situation, not be startled as much. It took a long time for him to accept me walking around him like that in a downstay. You saw he still kind of um, adjusts his body a little bit because he's still a little bit nervous about me walking behind him, but he's so much better than he used to be. Good. And so you want to stay calm when you're doing this exercise because he'll only be as calm as you are. If you're, if you're moving fast, walking fast, and you're uh, you're nervous and you're throwing food there and doing all these jerky movements, he's gonna be nervous as well. So he needs you to be calm when you're doing this because he'll only be as calm as you are when you're handling him. Good. Make sure you say good at the moment he takes the food. Make sure that you're always, when you walk behind him, walk around him like this, that you always go both ways so he's even on both sides. And you can give him a reward each time you go around just one side like this. Good. You can go around the other side and give him a reward when you come back. If at any time he gets up before you release him, you're going to say no. And you're going to gently but firmly just put him back. Good. Let's say he gets up. So I'm going to pretend he's doing really well. He's not making a mistake. So actually, I'm going to do some things that might make him get up. I'm going to do some really difficult things right now so that I can show you what to do if he makes a mistake. So he's got this really good downstay. The great thing about this exercise is that whatever he learns on this mat will carry over into real life. So out on the street, when you say down, he's going to have this kind of solid downstay. He's practiced this long enough on the mat. Now he can do a downstay, a real solid downstay without the mat over, for example, at Home Depot, which is going to be on the other part of this video in, in real, a real life situation with distractions going past. We got him to that point by doing this mat exercise. But I'm going to do some things that would likely make any dog pop up. For example, I'm going to leave him alone in the yard and go inside my house here. And you just show me going in the door there. Down. I'm re reminding him what to keep doing as I go in the house. Close the door behind me. Got to look at him through the window. You don't have to show me at the window. Hear me banging on the window. I'm looking at him. He sees me. Good. Well, <laughs> he didn't make a mistake, but that was very exceptional. That's an exceptional downstay, so he gets double reward. Good. Whenever he does something exceptional like that, you need to give him a little bit more of a reward because then he'll know, hey, I did something really good. I'm going to make sure that I do it the next time as well. So that didn't work, so going behind him and leaving the yard might work. Whenever you're going to ask him to do something that might be hard for him to do, it's okay to remind him what you want him to keep doing. So as you know, we, we don't say stay at all. Stay is built into down. So you don't have to say stay all the time. But if, I want, if I'm going to go somewhere and I want him to stay there and it might be difficult, before I go out there, I'm going to say down, just to remind him. And you only say it once. So let's see if I can get him to get up. I'm going through this gate, but I'm also going through the other gate. Well, that didn't work either. He's still down there. So we're just, I'm just going to have to show you how to handle a mistake <laughs> in another way. Good. Double reward for that. Nope. Good. Make sure he's still waiting, that his muzzle is there. You put the food there. He waits to withdraw and he takes it off the mat. He doesn't get in there and try to take it, try to jump the gun and try to 
take the food out of your hand or anything, that would be a reactive uh, behavior that you want him to uh, not be doing anymore. If he's being reactive on the mat, then you're not getting the benefits of this exercise. If he's calm like this on the mat, he comes off the mat, Every day he does this, he's going to be a little bit calmer throughout his day. This, this calmness will start to take over his whole life. So let's, let's pretend that he makes a mistake and I'm going to have to release him. No. He may jump the gun when, when he thinks you're about to release him because he is very anticipatory and so we're working on that. So see how I picked up the leash? And it, probably because I moved a little bit too fast. If he's making mistakes at something, move slower and he's more likely to be able to do whatever you you want him to do at first at least move slower later on you can move regular normal speed all i said was no and he went back that's one thing that will work most of the time he knows that no means to go back to where you were before but let's say i'm going to release him off the mat no see how he's kind of like anticipatory this is one of the most important parts of the exercise it's how you end the exercise that matters need to end on a real calm note. Okay. Sit. This is how you end the exercise. You release him off the mat calmly. You have him sit. You always release him out of a calm sit stay. You never release him off the mat He's because he's going to launch out of the down stay and take off. So he's still on the clock until you take him off the mat, have him sit. Everything starts and ends with a calm sit stay and make sure that he waits there no there's no pawing your hand or licking your hand he needs to wait there calmly until you pat his chest and you release him go that's how you you finish the exercise so now he's on free time but i want to show you what to do if he makes a mistake okay come on so he's on the mat let's say he gets up you're going to say no and you're going to step into him okay let's say that you did something he got up you say no, you pick up the leash. All I said was no. I didn't say down again. You already said down once when you sent him to the mat. It's really important that he know that when you say it the first time, it could hold, that one time you said it will hold for five minutes if need be. Because if the pattern is throughout all the training, you give him a command once and then he ends up doing it until he's released, that's what he will know. That's the pattern he'll he'll abide by and pretty soon all you have to do is say it once and if you're consistent in doing that and doing what we're doing on the video he'll do it the first time you tell him and he'll know that the first time means you know forever until you release him and you won't you'll be getting great behavior out of him and uh, you won't have to talk hardly at all which is what we want so if he makes a mistake you say no you do a little walk around thing walking back on the mat all I did was I raised my left foot like that he dropped down and then you would resume the exercise again. So we're finished with that mat exercise though. Oh, by the way, you can do this. We're doing in this big empty yard where I can drop the leash, it's fenced in and safe, so I can go different places and I know if he gets up, he's not gonna run out in the street or anything. But of course in public, you're never gonna let go of the leash if you're not in a fenced yard or in a safe place. But you can also do this in your living room, do the same thing. I went inside the house, well in your living room, you can leave the house knock on the door, do things like that, he'll do that as well, and we'll practice that at your house as well. But you can do this mat exercise in a lot of different places. Once he's perfect in one spot, then you wanna, it's time to change the exercise, make it a little bit harder for him to handle. Because if you only did the exercise in one place and he was perfect all the time, eventually he'd just start going to sleep because it wouldn't be challenging. So, like once he's perfect in the yard, you wanna change the direction of the mat, or put the mat over there, or put the mat in a different yard, or in a, in a different room, or something like that. So always be pushing the envelope, and he'll always be getting better and better and better if you, you're always just uh, making it a little bit harder. As soon as he's good at something, you want to change things up so it's a challenge for him. Okay.